Hi everyone, so what I want to show today is how to set up a VR project using the base template and how to just get some more performance out of it from the start essentially. So what I'm running is I've got Oculus set up with motion controllers. So that's the HMD that I'm using for today. So what you're going to need to do is set up a base project using the VR template. I'm going to use 4.21 because that's what I've already got installed. So I'm just going to launch that. So when you're in the Unreal project browser, you're going to want to go to New Project and the Virtual Reality. There's not really any point starting a VR project from scratch when the basis is already set up for you. It just saves time in the long run rather than setting up a, a character, the blueprints, the controllers and the hands. So with the virtual reality selected, what you're going to want to do is change the desktop to mobile and tablet. This changes the base engine INI file. It disables some features which aren't really needed on portable devices. I know it's running off a desktop, but some of the post-process post stuff that's enabled by default is quite a performance hit with VR so you're going to want to change that and also check that set the maximum quality to scalable 3d or 2d this just gives us more performance out of it and as well the, the whole idea is trying to hit that 90 FPS mark while building a project as nice and as big as you can so so now all you need to do is set up a save location which I've got a VR example YouTube VR Our example we don't want any start content because we're not going to be using any of it also you can actually access this from the editor you can pretty much you can enable it off the start just makes organization folders a little more tidy a little bit easier to work from cool so I get this for some reason I'm not too sure why I just hit update it's done um, New plugins are available. This might have stuff if you this might appear if you've already got stuff enabled. So I actually have Houdini, so the plugin is installed with my Unreal Engine. So that naturally turns on. You don't really have to worry about these if you have it. It might appear with the substance plugin as well. Cool. So this is the base template. We don't really need to use this if you know which headset you have. So because I've got the motion controllers which means I got the little hands, I can go straight to the virtual reality blueprints maps and open up the motion controller map. As this is where we're going to spend most of the time that we do stuff. From here I just usually go to actually yep, we'll go to project settings. We'll change the startup map to motion controller. This just means that when we close Unreal in a minute, it'll open back up with this level. Or ideally it should. I was having a couple of issues with it yesterday, but we'll cross our fingers. So what we need to do now with the, the editor open is enable forward rendering. So this all this will do is if you go project settings, it'll change over the renderer so not everything's done separately, which happens with most games. But with VR you want to try and minimize the amount of information being passed through at one time. So all you got to do is go to render, uh, rendering, uh, scroll down, and you can see it's you've got the option here. We just need to tick this. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use console commands to show you the max FPS that we're currently hitting in the editor at, the, at this point. So you can see we're hitting in the top right here, we're currently hitting 130 which is it's pretty good the targets 90 so we're above that already which isn't too bad so what we'll do now is we'll enable forward rendering and to do this you need to restart the editor so now it's back we can minimize that and I'll max FPS again 
So you can see now we're at 180, uh, 190. So we got some good performance back from that. So now what I'm going to do is go to post process, which is already in the scene. These are just some little things that I like to change. I'm not too sure whether this is already changed for you guys, but I usually set it to min and max of one. All this does is when you do in your scenes or environments, it allows you to have the same lighting throughout. It just makes it easier to manage your lighting scenes because you can then get them correct without having exposure or the room getting brighter or dimmer as you're trying to work in it. So that's just a good, that's just a nifty, nifty trick to keep that up. Um, don't need any of them, they're usually disabled anyway. So motion blur, we can disable that because we don't actually need it. Your eyes already do that when you're in VR, so you don't need to do it again on top of it. Some people do it just to smooth out the transition, make it less sharp, but it's not usually such a bad thing. Um, I'm going to go through the miscellaneous tab in rendering features for the screen percentage in a minute but first I'll show you the difference without so with the post process complete we can actually now go in and look at how to fix some of these jagged edges that you see around the scene because this is caused by the anti-aliasing so by changing the forward rendering we actually get the ability to use MSAA so multi sampling anti-aliasing and by doing this we can actually get a sharper image so all you gotta do is go to rendering and then default settings and anti-aliasing method so in here you've got MSA so you can see just by changing that we've got a much smoother edge it's not as smooth as some anti-aliasing uh, options give you for example temporal AA does a very good job and it looks much nicer but it's such a subtle difference that it's not too bad in VR and also MSAA gives you a sharper image in general so it stops textures from blurring it's, it's subtle but it's, it's a very big difference so you can see that's looking pretty nice now keep getting, dis keep getting confused whether I've actually enabled it so we can actually go to the drop down VR preview you can see it's it's actually looking pretty good much better than the, the original anti-aliasing that we had on it with the jagged lines so this is something that I wanted to mention as a as a developer option but it's not something you should ship a game with so in your rendering tab you have rendering features and at the bottom you have screen screen percentage essentially this is how much of the screen you want to display or yeah so you have 100% of your screen which is the default view and if you change that to 125 it would be 25% bigger so it would take it would scale the image up 25% and then pack it back down into the viewport this is useful when you want to remove some of these jagged lines that you you get normally from the MSAA so if I put this up to 150 you might be able to tell that there's a difference so keep this so that's before And then that's after you can see there's a lot more fuzziness on the shadows in the bottom it's just a, it's a good way of removing that however that the issue with this is it's rendering that extra 25% which is a big performance hit and also a lot of oculus and HTC Vive users they actually use the debug tools within steam and oculus to increase their screen percentage themselves so if you're putting this up to 150% and they are taking the, the, the product that you've made and increasing it on their end as well, by adding 150%, then you're around, you're, you're doubling that. Or you might not be doubling it, but you're still putting them on top. So that extra percentage can be a very big performance hit. If this is something you do want to include in your game, 
it's best to set up with a console command and a, a UMG setting so the user can change it themselves and scale the scene accordingly otherwise you might put it up to 200 it'll be running great on a GTX 2080 or something like that but as soon as somebody uses it on a, a 1070 it might tank the performance and just lock up and crash so it's, it's a good thing to give an option for but maybe not use yourself yeah so let's go on. so we can actually I can if I lower down to 70 and hit play you can see how the quality changes turn up to 150 it's pretty good so it, it's just that balancing act and finding the sweet spot between what you're after and what you want to give the user in the end but keeping this to 100 and then maybe creating a UI where you give them the option later on to change it would be a very good way of doing it. With the screen percentage stuff showing, we can actually make some more changes in the base project INI file. So if I go back into the project folder, so I'll go to showing folder, then config and default engine INI. So this will open. There's a few things that I've seen online and picked up myself just from around different places and at work. So what I can do is, so the changes that we're going to make in here, we're not actually going to modify anything in the file that's already here. We're just going to add some more settings to it. So these are stuff that I found online and just dotted about places, which seem to help quite a, quite a bit. So. I'll open up my demo one, config, default engine, this is the one that I've been using, this section here. So I'll put this in the description of the video so you can copy and paste it over. And I find the best place to put it is just underneath the render settings. These are probably dotted around inside the file, but we're just going to add them in. And all it does is disables, enables some stuff, and reduces or improves the quality in some areas. So for this part here, for the max roughness, I actually changed this to 5.5, also 0.55, and it's a good balance between having reflections and not, because in VR you don't want every surface to be reflective, unless it's something like an ArcVis project which is running extremely well and you want to show off reflections you don't usually use it for a, a VR game per se and if you do there is some other workarounds that we can do to improve the reflections within the scene rather than using the subsurface reflections and the max roughness so all you gotta do is save that after you paste it in good to go and we'll open that project back up so opening this up, hopefully you shouldn't see much of a difference. Uh, back up. So pretty good. And if I do max FPS again equals 999, you'll see that we're hitting 200. So it went from 180, I think it was, to now 200. This is all stuff that can be enabled and disabled in the editor. But just doing it this way allows you the control to go look for it when you need it rather than having it enabled and not knowing it's enabled and not needing it. It's just, it's all about the performance. The higher you can get your FPS to begin with, the less likely you are to cause motion sickness. And that'll be a big help with your project because the worst thing you can find is putting on a headset and immediately having the user feel sick. And as a developer, you'll find that you'll become used to it. So you you put a headset on and you're like, oh, okay, it's it's fine. I'm not feeling sick or anything. But somebody else could put it on and it could hit them immediately or after 10 minutes. And the whole point of this is to try and keep people in your project as long as possible. You, you don't want to put the user on and put them off VR or like have them use it and not enjoy the experience the whole point of this is for us to try and bring others 
to use the software or use the hardware in creative ways essentially so yeah so that's just a little bit of stuff that we can show or change in a, a base project so we, we essentially went from 140 or 130 I think it was FPS to hitting 200 and I think we've actually dropped in memory usage from the beginning I'll check in so yeah so you can see that from the beginning we were hitting around 140 I think it was and now we're pretty much bang on 200 we're staying at a steady rate so that's that's just a couple of tips and tricks of starting a VR project from scratch that can help increase the performance of your engine and the product you use. A good thing to remember as well is while you're in the editor your game often runs like relatively low as FPS. So I think it's actually capped at 120 but when you do a build you'll find that you actually get more performance out of it that's due to not having the engine running in the background and it's trying to think of everything that's going on it just increases the performance as well so chances are if we built this project the max would hit around 250 rather than just 200 so you still get a little bit more out of it but it's something you've got to consider as you develop if you can keep the editor at that sweet spot then your build of the project is definitely going to be able to hit above and beyond what you've been aiming for it's, it's all just learning the little tips and tricks and trying to keep it on top of what it is you're doing and then blueprints blueprints and code later on can affect performance so it's it's just a balancing act but hopefully this is a good place to start and it, it gets your FPS going and it's possible that some of this stuff could actually be used in the other templates I've never really tried it but I imagine it's it's all usable and it's a good thing to think of when doing a project so, yeah. hope that helps uh, like and subscribe and if there's anything you want to see in the future drop us a comment below and I'll see what I can do we'll go from there and we'll use this as a, a really nice test bench and see how far we get